Now, SEBI in the sense, Securities and Exchange Board of India, which was established in the year 1988. Primary markets in the sense, the fresh shares, fresh shares are brought and sold. That is called the fresh shares. Now, every time SEBI will publish its journals, it will tell what are the new things which has been added what all are the old things which are being deleted? Hello everybody, a warm welcome to One and All. I'm Abhilash Chandra from the Department of Commerce and Management in Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Welcome to the seventh session of Company Law and Secretarial Practice. Now we're in the first chapter. Now the first chapter is all about Companies Act. Now we have spoken about what exactly a Companies Act is. 2013 Companies Act and the difference between 1956 Companies Act and 2013. We also went with how a company has been formed what are promoters, what is the promotion which we really need and uh, certificates of incorporation and certificate of commencement we also got to know. Now there is a time which you people need to know that where the securities will be uh, checked, what is the regulatory who actually go with the investors, uh, uh, safety and all those things you are supposed to know and let me tell you this is the session where you will understand the real regulatory body we call that as Securities and Exchange Board of India, uh, popularly known as SEBI. And SEBI is the most uh, regulatory body which people always see to it that if any scam will happen, if any fraudulent thing will happen, if any mis uh, mistakes happen, SEBI is always there to rectify those mistakes and that is the reason SEBI has been given a statutory and the ordinance was passed in parliament and a special SEBI act has been implemented in 1992. So what exactly SEBI is all about? Now SEBI in the sense Securities and Exchange Board of India, which was established in the year 1988. If I need to be specific, then I'll go with the 12th April 1988 is what it was established. And it was established as an interim administrative body. And the real reason was it was a regulatory body which used to promote. Now, when it used to promote this, orderly and healthy growth of security market and for investor protection see the major is what it's only for the investors protection and let me tell you more about it in 1988 what used to happen is all the investors they felt that the brokers that is the intermediaries and the people who are the in the company they have some kind of a connection where they'll get to know what uh, shares will go up, watches will go down and they used to feel that they are being cheated and then there was a special uh, ordinance which was passed in the parliament and uh, somebody was supposed to be there to monitor what's happening and RBI couldn't do anything for this. Then there was a uh, application of let's have a regulatory body which should uh, protect and govern the securities exchange and then the SEBI really came to pitch up. The SEBI was given a statutory status on 30th January 1992. Now understand, 88, 1988, it gets established. But see what happens in India, it takes too much time, right? Only in the year 1992, that is after our liberalization, privatization, globalization, which happened in 1991, that is the economic reform, we get this as a statutory status, but still the statutory status is not just uh, we got it just like that. We also had this ordinance. There was a special ordinance which was passed in the parliament, though uh, through an ordinance, the ordinance was later replaced. Now, again, we went with a replacement of ordinance, but here what has happened is there was a special act that is a act of parliament known as Securities and Exchange Board of India Act 1992. So they made it a, a regulation and they made it in a special act which really wanted to protect the interest of the investors. See, whenever we want to protect the 
interest of the investor or the public, then what happens is both in Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, the bill should pass and then they got the majority and that is how the ordinance was replaced as an act. Now we go with all this act of 1992. Now again SEBI has been revised now. You have a special acts for SEBI. There are so many clauses which has uh, been added. There were some loopholes and it was deleted in the present act of SEBI. Reasons for establishment of SEBI, please understand the reasons now. The capital market, when you understand, you are supposed to know there are two types of market here, students. One is we call it as a primary market and one more is secondary market. Please understand when you understand this market, primary markets in the sense, the fresh shares, fresh shares are brought and sold that is called the fresh shares now the company issues shares now whenever the company want to raise fund what is that they do is they issue shares the freshly shares are brought and uh, they are not sold they are only brought but it is sold by the company that's why we say brought and sold and uh, secondary market is your stock exchange is a secondary market now here what happens is whatever is bought and sold that will be sold and again purchased in the secondary market. Now commonly we have NSE that is National Stock Exchange and BSE. Earlier to it uh, we had uh, even Bombay uh, stock before that we had uh, so many other stock exchanges but it couldn't get recognized the way Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange have got. The oldest is Bombay Stock Exchange, then we have uh, National Stock Exchange, but Bangalore Stock Exchange was also there, Mangalore Stock Exchange was there, Gauhati Stock Exchange was there, Uttar Pradesh Stock Exchange was there, just like that Gujarat Stock Exchange was there. Now understand now all these stock exchanges, it's only because of SEBI rules and regulations, they are closed. And now in India, we follow two of the stock exchanges. We trade in two of the stock exchanges, that is National Stock Exchange and Bombay Stock Exchange. So this is what it is, primary market and secondary market. We have uh, two type of other branches called as money market and capital market. In the capital market, you will get this primary market and secondary market. When it comes to money market, the money market is a very big kind of a market where all the fundings will happen within one year. The, I'll talk more about this money market in the next sessions. Let's stick on to the same thing that is the reasons for establishment of SEBI. The capital market has witnessed a tremendous growth during 1980s. Yes, you can actually go with the Harshad Mehta scam also here. Harshad Mehta is a person who should be spoken whenever we go with SEBI, RBI and stock exchange as well as money market and capital market is concerned. Harshad Mehta is always in the top list where what exactly he did and what was the investment he made. And even if there is a, a series called 1992 scam, you people can actually watch it. How SEBI will come and how they will uh, take over Harshad Mehta and his property. That is what the reasons for establishment is all about. They characterized particularly by increasing participation of the public. So here public started to know that there was a recession and uh, in US what happened was when recession hits USA, the effect is also in India, right? That is what the reality is now early 90s and uh, late 80s when recession happened many people thought that they lost their job and many people thought to make money we are supposed to go with share market and many people came and they joined the share market when uh, more people were there when it was being crowded then what happened there was a regulatory board which was very much needed that's the reason SEBI has come to the uh, field. Now this ever expanding investors population and market capitalization led to the variety of malpractices on the part of companies, brokers, merchant bankers, investment consultants and other involved in the securities market. Now what happened? Everybody started to come. So when everybody wanted to come and they had their small savings and they started to invest, now what happened? The malpractice became more 
when it was like a company, a broker, all those people, they thought the new freshers, whoever are coming to the share market, they don't know anything about it. And these people used to take undue advantages of their innocence. That led to the government finding one particular regulatory board that is called SEBI. Purpose and role of SEBI. Now we'll go with three of the different purpose and role of SEBI. What here happens here is first thing is to the issuers. Issuers in the sense the company, right? Now we'll go with the company first. To the investors, when I say investors, it is it can be anybody who will invest, invest. Now it can be individual, it can be a company investing on some other company, it can be anything. To the intermediaries, when I say intermediaries, usually it will be the brokers, the merchantile banks and other financial consultants. Now these people are the intermediaries. So these are the role now, role and purpose, why it has actually come. Firstly, we have as to the issuers. Now here you need to understand that when we go with the issuers, it aims to provide a marketplace. That means they, SEBI will give them a proper platform where they can actually go with it, in which they can confidently look forward to raising finance. See, you need to understand source of business finance source of business finance now when you go with source of business finance because you are learning company law to form a company you should always have a source of business finance one of the business finance is what you can take money from the stock exchange now, it aims to provide a marketplace in which they can confidently look forward to raising finance. They need to in an ease, fair and efficient manner. See, this is what the plus point is. That is fairly you can actually raise fund. So that is what uh, SEBI will actually give you. To the investor, if you go, that is the public, it should provide protection. See, the public should always get protection because there are so many innocent people who don't even know what really happens in the stock exchange of their rights and interests. See, why SEBI is very much needed in this uh, 21st century is there are people who don't know what exactly is their rights and their interests through adequate, accurate and authentic information and disclosure of information on a continuous basis. Every time SEBI will publish its journals, it will tell what are the new things which has been added, what all are the old things which have been deleted. So that's why on a regular basis, SEBI will always monitor what's happening with the investors, intermediaries and the issuers. The last one is all about the intermediaries, that is the brokers. Now it should offer a competitor. See, understand even in the brokers, the SEBI is not so strict. It goes with till a competitive level, you people can actually go with it. But after that, if it is uh, unethical practice, then SEBI will be there who will regulate and they'll stop the action. Professionalized and expanding market with adequate and efficient infrastructure so that they are able to render better services to the investors and issuers. When I say investor, it is the public and when it is issuers that is the company in which they are going and trading now these are the things which you people should know and my question to you is which are the shares which can be easily transferable and i know that you people know it as a public company stock exchanges here what happens only public company will be listed you can only trade public company shares the next uh, question and the next topic will be development functions of SEBI. Now, why uh, development or the functions of SEBI is so important? You should know that. That is the first thing is SEBI will give educational values to the investor. That is what they are supposed to do. That is investor education. Next is training of intermediaries. If you want to register yourself as an intermediary, you can actually go and uh, enroll in SEBI. SEBI will give you the uh, training and they'll charge you only a like little uh, amount 
it's not like uh, so much uh, huge amount is needed they'll give you a very easily you can actually go there and you can learn these things so training of intermediaries is also done by sebi then promotion of fair practice please understand mal practice and fair practice there is always a difference uh, sebi will only go with fair practices if there is any mal practice and sebi will come and they'll arrest those people promotion of fair practice and code of conduct that is what you are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do will be actually taken of all SROs. Now, SROs is self regulatory organization. Self regulatory organization. So, it will give a promotion of fair practices and code of conduct of all self-regulatory organizations and the last one is it conducting research and publishing information useful to all market participants now market pass participants are oh, three of the people one is issuer then we have uh, is the intermediary and then we have a person who is actually investing that is an investor so this is what the sebi regulations or the sebi functions is done that is the development functions anywhere uh, if you you don't know as an investor that where exactly you are supposed to invest sebi will not give you an idea that where you are supposed to invest but sebi will tell how is that you are supposed to invest so all these things will be given by sebi but here i'll tell you what it is earlier if you compare what used to happen before 1990s and after the SEBI became the statutory body and then it got its own act. More of the malpractices are being uh, rectified. It is minimized. And now SEBI has guaranteed that uh, in coming days what happens is National Stock Exchange and Bombay Stock Exchange will be uh, taken care and they will improve the way the mechanism is happening. Though the dematerialization of the shares have been done, they are doing so many other kind of things where it should be 0% uh, malpractice and 0% fraudulent things which SEBI is looking forward. Next session, I'll be explaining you about the functions of SEBI and then the, the regulatory board and then we'll go with the registrar of companies. Thank you so much, students. If you have uh, gone with the sessions, you will understand everything. So please watch Companies Act session 1 to session 7 if you have not watched it. Now we'll come with the session 8 in the next session. Thank you, students. I'll see you when I see you.